Welcome to Bay Bridge 360. They say you only get one chance at a first impression. If that's true, then motor's first experience of the new east span of the Bay Bridge is going to be right here on the Oakland Touchdown. Over the next six minutes, we'll take a look at how we're constructing the approach to our world-class bridge. Just west of the toll plaza, nestled against the Oakland shoreline, the Oakland Touchdown will introduce drivers to the new east span as it carries traffic from Interstate 80 onto the sweeping parallel decks of the Skyway. The Oakland Touchdown plays a vital role in the construction of the new east span's most iconic element, the self-anchored suspension span. Once the Touchdown's westbound lanes are finished, crews will access the Skyway to work on the eastern end of the suspension bridge. Deep within the roadway, where the Oakland Touchdown and Skyway connect, sits a state-of-the-art seismic innovation. Hinge pipe beams act as seismic lightning rods designed to absorb seismic energy in an earthquake, helping protect the rest of the bridge. Fuses inside the beams take the brunt of the seismic force and can be removed and replaced after an earthquake. Prime contractor MCM Construction began work on the Oakland Touchdown in August 2007. By mid-2009, crews had built support structures for both the west and eastbound roadways, and most of the westbound roadway. In the first phase of construction, crews will finish the westbound roadway and part of the eastbound roadway. During the second phase, after westbound traffic has shifted to the new east span in 2012, crews will build the rest of the eastbound roadway. To build those supports, nearly six foot diameter steel shell piles are pounded deep into the muddy waters of the Oakland shoreline. The piles, which are welded together on site, range in length from 115 to 197 feet. Steel sheets are attached to create coffer dams around the piles, which let crews pump out water so they have unfettered access. After the piles are driven into the bay, crews fill them with concrete and steel rebar, which is coated in a purple epoxy to prevent corrosion. While deck sections for the Skyway and SAS are built off-site, the Oakland Touchdown crew acts as its own on-site fabrication team. After building the bottom and sides of the deck, which echo the shape of the Skyway, workers erect a field of temporary steel to support molds for the roadway. Crews will remove the steel inside the deck after the concrete has cured. Nearly 8,700 tons of reinforcing steel and 1.5 million cubic feet of concrete are being used to build the first phase. Despite using state-of-the-art construction technology to build the new east span, including the Oakland Touchdown, this is largely a handmade bridge, from tying down rebar to pouring concrete. Crews are on track to finish the 1,000 foot long westbound roadway in late summer 2009. Once the deck sections are finished, concrete retaining walls are erected on both sides of the Oakland Touchdown. The space beneath the roadway is filled with a lightweight concrete that is one fifth the weight of regular concrete. When building a bridge, crews must create an embankment behind the bridge abutment to get from the level roadway to the bridge. 
In most cases, an embankment is filled with soil, but that can settle over time. Lightweight or cellular concrete solves that problem. It's lighter than soil, does not settle, and also floats in water. For the Oakland touchdown, crews are using 586,000 cubic feet of cellular concrete. A key part of the success of this project is putting the environment first. To keep from dredging mud near the shoreline, an access trestle was built. This trestle allows construction work to happen out of the water. By keeping cranes and other heavy equipment on the trestle, we preserve local natural habitats and nearby marine life. Thanks again for clicking over to Bay Bridge 360, where we track the building of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. Tune back into our website to continue following how we're doing.